Hi, Els here, and today we're going to work on a question about allocating service department costs. Let's get started. We've got a question here about JC Janitorial Services. They provide cleaning services to both residential and commercial clients. They've got two operating departments. We know that operating departments are also called profit centers. They're supported by two service departments, human resources and information technology, which I'm going to call IT. The HR department's costs are allocated to the operating departments based on the number of employees. And the IT department's costs are allocated based on the number of inquiries. And the company uses a single rate method to allocate service department costs. We're going to do four things. We're going to allocate the service department costs using the direct method. Then we're going to talk about how to choose the first service department to use in the step down method. Then we're going to actually do the step down method. And finally, we're going to do the reciprocal method. Note that I always provide these questions for you, so you don't actually have to take a screenshot. You can simply download it and then follow along. In order to correctly allocate service department costs to operating, remember, also called profit or revenue departments, we have to start by following some basic steps. Step one is on the chart, write the service department's name in front of the cost driver that the service department actually uses. That means that in front of number of employees, I'm going to write HR. That's because number of employees is a cost driver for human resources. In front of number of inquiries, I'm going to put down IT. Again, IT's driver is number of inquiries. Now, why am I doing this? You'll see why I recommend this as we move through the question. It's hugely helpful in multiple places. Step number two we need to eliminate the services that each department performs for themselves. In order to do that, go to the first row of the drivers. So I've got HR, right? I'm looking at HR. Wait, I'm going to do it. See, I'm looking at HR. So I look at HR, and I move over from HR to HR. I'm going to put a line just so you can see it. So notice I'm moving from HR to HR. HR cannot allocate HR costs to HR. So we have to X this out. Let me just get rid of the line. Now I'm going to go to the second row, which is IT, and I'm going to do the exact same thing. IT to IT, I'm going to X this out. I don't need it, get rid of it. Again, why am I doing this? Because we don't need to allocate human resource cost to human resources, because 100% of the human resource costs are already in human resources, as represented by the $340,000. It's the same for IT. Eliminate these numbers because otherwise during the exam you're going to end up using this number in error. Just get rid of it so you don't fall into that trap. Step three is to choose the method you'll allocate the service department costs with. I'm going to demonstrate all three methods, but in a business you need to decide which method to use. This will be based on your professional judgment and your understanding of the pros and cons of each method. You'll need to apply your understanding of those pros and cons and the business you work in, the environment, and make a reasoned decision. Right now, I'm going to demonstrate all three methods. After I demonstrate each method, I'll speak about the pros and cons of those methods. Let's get started. Number one, allocate service department costs using the direct method. I'm going to refer back to this chart constantly, so make sure you have it in front of you. For the direct method, it makes no difference whether I start with HR or IT. So I'm going to just start with HR. HR has $340,000 of direct costs in that department. Under the direct method, I'm going to allocate these costs only to the operating departments. I'm going to totally ignore that IT uses HR. That means I'm only going to put this towards residential and commercial. I'm also going to put over here a total. This is my check to make sure that I'm doing this correctly. So what's the first thing I have to put down? The actual drivers. So I know what those drivers are. I can get them from the chart. Notice for HR, when I'm working on it, I want to look to the row that has the word HR in front of it. This is what's so critical about putting HR in front of here. So for information technology, I'm going to ignore it. The four means nothing to me. For residential, I have to pay attention to the 12, and for commercial, I have to pay attention to the 26. So the driver for residential is 12, and for commercial, it's 26. 
I want to get a total of these because I need that total, and the total is 38. So I just added 12 plus 26. Now, how am I going to divide the $340,000? I'm going to use this driver as the base. I'm going to take 12, and I'm going to divide it by the 38, and I'm going to multiply it times the 340,000. That's going to give me the allocation that I have to put towards residential. I'm moving the costs out of the Human Resource Department and adding those costs to residential and commercial. 12 divided by 38 multiplied by $340,000 is $107,368. Make sure you don't keep pennies. This is just an estimate, so we don't even want to deal with pennies. 26 divided by 38 multiplied by 340 is equal to 232,632. Now, here's why I have a total. I want to make sure that these calculations are correct. So I add 107,368 to 232,632, and I make sure it equals 340,000 so that I know that this is correct. And I can see that it is. Now I move on to IT. I don't need to put headings for residential and commercial because I already have those right here. So I'm just going to continue on. IT has costs of $250,000. I need the driver. I'm going to go back to the chart to get it. Here it is. I can see that the driver for IT is number of inquiries, 980, 1,200. Under residential, I put 980. And under commercial, I put 1,200. I'm going to put a total, 2,180. And then I'm going to take the 980, divide it by the 2,180, multiply it times 250,000, and that will give me my allocation. In this case, the allocation is 112,385. I'm going to take the 1,200, I'm going to divide it by the 2,180, multiply it times the 250,000, and that's going to equal 137,615. If I add these two numbers together, they have to equal the 250,000, and they do. So I have an internal check to ensure that my total is correct. Now I've got the two allocations for residential and commercial based on what's coming out of human resources and what's coming out of IT. What do I have to do now? I have to calculate the total that's being allocated to residential and commercial. In order to do that, I add the 107,368 and the 112,385 together, which equals 219,753. That's the total costs that are being allocated out of human resources and IT and placed into residential. Similarly, for commercial, I take the 232,632 and the 137,615 and I add them together. That's going to equal 370,247. If I add these two amounts together, I should end up with the total of both human resources and IT, 590,000. Notice if I add down, I end up with that same 590,000. And if I go back to our chart and I add together the 340 plus the 250, I end up with the 590,000. So I know I've moved 100% of the costs out of human resources and information technology into the residential and commercial operating departments. What else might I do? I can add in the direct costs for residential and commercial and get an idea of the total costs that residential and commercial now have to cover with the revenue that they generate. If I take the direct costs from those departments, going back to the chart, I see it's 670,000 for residential, 980,000 for commercial. Now what I'm going to get is the total overhead costs that the residential and commercial operating departments have to cover with the revenue they generate. For residential, it's 889,753. And for commercial, it's 1,350,247. If I now add these costs together, they equal 2,240,000. That number has to match our chart. If I add all of these costs up together, they equal 2,240,000.
100% of the costs from human resources and information technology have now been moved out of those service departments and placed into the operating departments. This is the direct method. What are the pros and cons of this method? The pro is that this is the simplest method for allocating service department costs. It is also the easiest to explain to managers. This is an important factor because managers of the operating departments have to cover these costs. And unless we can explain to them how we're allocating the costs, it becomes difficult for them to not feel like they're being put upon. It's a lot easier to get a manager to buy in to having to cover support department costs when you can easily explain the method that you've used to allocate those costs. What's the most obvious con? This method totally ignores the fact that human resources provide services to IT and IT provides services to human resources. 100% of the overhead costs from the service departments are allocated only to the operating departments. This method assumes that service departments provide no services to one another. As a consequence, this method may not reflect economic reality and it may inappropriately allocate cost to the operating departments. But it does have the benefit of being very simple to calculate and to explain to the managers who will want to know how the allocations of service department costs are made. Thank you so much for listening to this video. I hoped it was beneficial to your learning.